Mike, I'm just going to open this up to you here. Tell us what you learned, what you heard from Notre Dame's first official visit weekend. Yeah. How about five takeaways? Five is a good number. So it's like five things I learned, five takeaways, nine official visitors, um, and then uh, three offered unofficial visitors that were in um, – in that 2023 class. If if you're watching on YouTube and I keep like looking down this way, it's because my phone is just, it, it, there's just so much going on right now. My phone is buzzing um, nonstop. The first takeaway is that it's kind of funny that now I'm going to talk about the bat signal um, after the beginning of the podcast, we talked about a bat, but um, there's no bat signal yet, but Notre Dame fans be patient. Like the, the kind of this takeaway is that prospects who maybe the Notre Dame staff thought would have committed following this weekend or on the visit are not doing so because these recruits have not been able to take this kind of visit on in 15 months, you know, like some recruits maybe took official visits during their sophomore year. Uh, We talk all the time about that November, 2019, period where Notre Dame had a ton of 2022 recruits on campus um, and that's kind of paying dividends in in the long run. But, um, you know, a lot of prospects didn't get their first offer until post dead period of last March. So these recruits want to see campuses. They want to meet coaching staffs. Like even if they're leaning hard to Notre Dame, they're going to wait until making that decision. So as we record Right now, in this exact moment, it's Tuesday, June 15th, 5.38 p.m. Eastern Time. No bat signals out. No new commitments following that June 11th weekend. Um, But my message to you guys is be patient. You know, like, wait to see what happens here. Um, I still think when you look at this group of nine official visitors, I could seriously think, say that about six to eight of them of nine could end up in the class like that's that's insane but like seriously um could happen maybe they could even go a clean sweep like who knows but i I think that at least six of them i could see ending up in notre dame's class so that's takeaway number one takeaway number two uh patrick is notre dame making headway with um three prospects in particular um, I'm going to first Tobias Merriweather, uh, the four-star receiver from Vancouver, Washington union high school. This is a guy for a while. I've been saying, I feel like Notre Dame's in the lead. Um, it's Notre Dame Stanford battle. Um, it's close. He is, um, also likes Oregon a lot. Um, the LA schools are involved, but I really feel like it's Notre Dame or Stanford from what I'm told Tobias Merriweather really clicks, um, off the field great program fit Um, everything about his visit to Notre Dame went very well Um, and you had an article interviewing Tobias's father Dom Uh, make sure you check that out at blueandgold.com so man Notre Dame's receiver class (laughs) we'll talk about uh, Amorion Walker later you know there's receiver class is certainly interesting right now it is the most fascinating position to follow in this 2022 cycle for Notre Dame If the Irish could get Tobias Merriweather, uh, the nation's number 156 overall player, number 21 receiver, that'd be huge for Dell Alexander, Tommy Reese, um, and Brian Brian Kelly. The next guy I feel like they really did a a fantastic job with is Anthony Lucas. Um, Man, I think it was like five months ago he was a three-star player on Rivals. Now he's a four-star, number 12 strong side end in the country, number 149 overall player in the land. I think on 24-7, he's close to a five-star prospect, if not a five-star prospect. I mean, this is a huge target for Notre Dame. Um, I would argue he's one of the top three or four most important recruits on the entire board um, in the eyes of that coaching staff in South Bend. Um, You know, he took an official visit to Texas A&M. He left Notre Dame for Oregon. He was visiting Miami this weekend. His father's alma mater, Alabama, LSU still. I mean, tons of schools are in the mix. Um, And my sources in South Bend aren't really 100% sure, like, if Lucas is coming to Notre Dame. Uh, But the feeling afterwards is that, you know, quote from a source, he was the star of the weekend. Big personality. 
um, every room he was he walked in um, you know just lit it up um, you know Lucas had a fantastic time at Notre Dame haven't been able to talk to him personally because he literally flew from South Bend to Eugene Oregon um, but you know in, in talking to sources and, and and even just seeing his social media post seems like he had a fantastic time uh, and then the next guy Dallin Hayden you know, when you talk about these big three running back targets for Notre Dame, um, between uh, Hayden, um, Gavin Sawchuk from Colorado, and Nicholas Singleton from Penn State, excuse me, from Pennsylvania, who I think might be leaning Penn State, uh, but uh, he comes in this weekend. Hayden's kind of the guy who I felt like was the, the least likely of the three. But to be honest, it's all all three of them were a toss up. Hayden might be the most likely now. Like th- these three, it's it's hard to completely understand. I uh, under or predict what's going to happen. I still feel like you know Notre Dame's got a strong shot with Hayden um, as well as Sawchuck and Singleton. But we'll see. But Hayden's visit went really well. His father Aaron, a former Tennessee running back, interestingly enough, was rocking the orange. Um, even though Tennessee is, is not uh, in the mix here. But, um, you know, his, his again, his visit went well. Um, he visits Ohio State this weekend. We'll see him uh, in just a couple of days at the Rivals Five Star Challenge. I am so excited to finally meet Dallin Hayden and talk to him in person after interacting with him and his dad for a year. Um, so see him Thursday. He heads to Ohio State Friday. It's a Notre Dame-Ohio State battle in my eyes. He visited Illinois at the uh, top of the month. I, but again, feel like this is fighting Irish Buckeye battle. Um, and by all indications, his visit went extremely well. All right, takeaway number three. Uh, let's talk about some 2023s. This was an impactful group for Notre Dame. Alex Sonny Styles, the number 26 overall player in the country, a rover target for Notre Dame, but honestly could play... Um, I don't know, maybe six positions at Notre Dame uh, on that defense, maybe seven. Like, this dude's a stud um, for sure. Listed at 6'5", 216, long, rangy, um, very good player. He uh, was on campus this weekend helping his brother, um, you know, Lorenzo, move back in for summer school. Uh, but, of course, got to meet the coaching staff, photo shoot with Marcus Freeman, all that good stuff. So, um, Sonny Style, someone who's certainly familiar with Notre Dame, has been visiting for quite some time with his brother, but finally got to meet Marcus Freeman, that new defensive staff, and um, we'll have a story on Style's visit here um, soon at blueandgold.com. Alex Burkmeyer, uh, Virginia offensive guard in that 2023 class, rivals ranked him as the number 61 overall player in the country. Had a story up on him. Uh, Tuesday at blueandgold.com. Uh, I think this one is like a Notre Dame, Penn State, Ohio State battle. Uh, Virginia Tech also in there, you know, right around 30 scholarship offers. Um, I think his visit went really well. You know, these offensive linemen aren't the biggest divas. You know, they're not going to, you know, give you the, the crazy quotes. Burkmeyer just seems like a blue collar guy who's not going to drag this recruitment all out and take five official visits and do the whole uh, hat table trick thing, you know, on commi- on signing day, or whatever. Like, I think Burke Meyer could be someone who pops in the next couple months. You know, we'll see where Notre Dame's at when when that time comes. Um, and, and then the last guy I want to talk about here is Keon Keeley. You know, Cooper Flanagan certainly could talk about uh, as a tight end from California who visited. But um, Keon Keeley put in a future cast pick for him following his visit. Uh, I feel like this is a Notre Dame Florida battle, but this uh, six six defensive end. Um, and the pictures he tweeted after his visit, I was like, good Lord, like he's a big ripped dude. Um, Notre Dame would be fantastically fired up, um, weird term, but they would just be juiced if they could get Keon Keeley. Um, and I feel like, you know, he, he could pop sooner than later. Uh, I really like where Notre Dame's at with Keon Keeley as it looks to get its first, um, commitment in the 2023 class. We'll see, uh, if the Irish are able to lock him up. All right, really could use some water right now, but we're just going to keep keep plugging along. Um, talked about no bat signals out yet, but two players who I feel like are close, Billy Shrouth, uh, the four-star guard uh, from Wisconsin, number 117 overall player in the country, number three guard, uh, visited Wisconsin the first weekend of June, was at Notre Dame last weekend. He's supposed to be visiting Ohio State today. I'm not 100% sure if he ended up making it in. He told me he might be canceling that visit. 
at the end of the day, it's Notre Dame versus Wisconsin. Um, this is a guy who's been a long time Irish lean. You know, maybe he's been a silent commitment, which is why I say silent commitments are stupid. And I don't know why anyone even talks about them because like, what did that silent commitment get you? Cause he's at Wisconsin last week, you know, the weekend, of uh, first weekend of June. So who, who even cares? Um, but that's besides the point. I think he's going to land at Notre Dame, but we will see what Shrouth ends up doing. I do feel like he is close to popping for the Irish. And then Nuave Jr. Tui Halamaka, the number 144 overall player in the country, number five inside backer. He was the number one uh, inside linebacker, but I guess his junior season didn't really impress the rivals analysts. They dropped him down to number five. Still a very respectable ranking. He was at Texas the first weekend of June, Notre Dame this past weekend. I think that um, there's a good chance he's Notre Dame's next commitment. Um, rumored commitment date of uh, June 19th is, is kind of what's been out there. So we will see if uh, Junior Tui Halamaka ends up at Notre Dame. His visit went really well. Talk to him. Stories at blueandgold.com. All right, and number five, takeaway number five, that there are is that there are three defensive back recruits who officially visited this past weekend in wife, who I feel like are close to committing to Notre Dame. I could see Notre Dame landing all three of these prospects to go along with Jaden Mickey from California, who's already committed. Four-star corner Devin Moore talked to him on Sunday. That story's at blueandgold.com. Um, loved his visit. He even seemed to be recruiting Dallin Hayden on Twitter. Like That was really interesting to me. Um, love where Notre Dame's at with Devin Moore. Love where Notre Dame's at with Benjamin Morrison, another four-star player who I have a, a future cast pick in for Notre Dame to land. Um, I know he's visiting Washington this month. Not 100% sure if he's going to be at Oregon. Visited Alabama and uh, Auburn at the beginning of the month unofficially, but I just feel like Notre Dame's after him the most, won him the most. I think he'd be a great fit at Notre Dame. And then Jake Pope, uh, the uh, safety from Buford, Georgia. You know, he took a, uh, an, 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 excuse me, an official visit to Notre Dame this past weekend, of course. He's got Ohio State this upcoming weekend, Alabama at the end of the month, and visited North Carolina the first weekend. Uh, but talk to him. Articles up on Tuesday at BloomGold.com about Pope's visit. And uh, look, the Pope in – it's it's Notre Dame. They've got to get the Pope. So we will see. Um, I, I think Notre Dame gave him a lot to think about. Um, you know, certainly considering a future cast pick in for Notre Dame here. But the thing about the future cast picks in these DBs is, you know, there's what three to four spots left, and you know, there's a group of like five or six targets, and it's just like, you know, they're gonna get some of these guys. It's just you know tough to to exactly predict. Xavier Nwankba comes in this weekend. Uh, Jaden Bellamy, Notre Dame's in the top, I would argue, top two for both of those guys. Uh, I think it's Penn State, Notre Dame for Bellamy, and Ohio State, Notre Dame for Xavier Nwankba. So, um, yeah, if receiver is the most interesting position group to follow in this class, I would say that uh, DB is second.